Earth, a truly remarkable specimen of space. Known for its diverse range of ecosystems, distinct seasons, dynamic geological activity, and of course, life. It's a one-of-a-kind entity that encompasses some of the most beautiful and destructive phenomenon the universe has to offer. So it's thankful that a planet of such scale doesn't play favorites and treats us all equally, right? At first glance, you might think this matchup makes no sense. They don't seem to have anything in common whatsoever. But think about it, what is the force of nature all three characters utilize in order to win this battle? That's right, all three of them utilize the planet itself to protect them. Whether it's through calamity, divine protections, or the counterforce, the world will do everything in its power to make sure they achieve victory. However, what if these three beings loved by the planet itself were to battle? Who would it prioritize? So that's what I'm trying to figure out today. Now before you say, Good sir, Ride Hard is not from Earth. He exists in another world. Please fix this small mistake my good fellow. I'm going into this battle assuming the rules and laws of all three fictional works apply to the same planet. But I also set up portion of the battle on Lagunica just to see what will theoretically happen. Reinhardt's skill set mainly consists of divine protections. Divine protections are special abilities or powers granted to certain individuals by a divine force. These divine protections play a significant role in the story, as they often shape the abilities and characteristics of various characters in the ReZero world. They grant the recipient enhanced abilities or powers related to their specific protection. These abilities can range from combat based skills to more specific talents such as enhanced perception, magic proficiency, or something more unique. Divine protections come from and are granted to people by Odd Lagna, which is heavily theorized to be the center or soul of the world. It is said to store mana, souls, memories, and divine protections. It is unknown if Odd Lagna is a conscious being or not, but one thing's for sure, it seems to really love Reinhardt. In fact, Reinhardt has the most divine protections in the entire series, each tailored for every situation. Oh, the divine protection of wind evasion. Reinhardt is unaffected by wind and does not feel any wind resistance when moving. The divine protection of projectile evasion. Projectiles such as arrows and knives and any thrown object will change their trajectory, effectively making it impossible for them to hit him. The divine protection of first sight, Reinhardt automatically knows how to counter or dodge attacks he has experienced for the first time, including surprise attacks. The divine protection of second sight gives Reinhardt the power to respond to attacks that they've experienced twice or more with vastly greater speed and reflexes. The divine protection of Phoenix and Phoenix Next gives Reinhardt the power to immediately revive himself after he dies. The divine protection of blue skies, Reinhardt becomes stronger when under blue skies. The divine protection of teary skies, Reinhardt becomes stronger when under rainy skies. The divine protection of night skies, Reinhardt becomes stronger when under the night sky. The divine protection of lakes, Reinhardt becomes able to walk on water. The divine protection of clouds, Reinhardt is able to walk on clouds. The divine protection of lightning, Reinhardt is unable to get hit by lightning. The divine protection of magic resistance, Reinhardt is immune against curses and debuffs. The divine protection of swiftness, Reinhardt can move at superhuman speeds. The divine protection of power bleeding, Reinhardt bleeding makes him stronger. The divine protection of illness immunity, Reinhardt is immune to any and all sicknesses and diseases. The divine protection of poison immunity, Reinhardt is immune to all sorts of poison. And the most dangerous of all, the divine protection of sodium mastery, allowing him to never mistake salt and sugar. This is only a small taste of the divine blessings Reinhardt has. He actually has even more, and in fact, Reinhardt can create more whenever he pleases. Reinhardt doesn't necessarily take the divine protections of other users. He instead can just invent or wish for a new divine protection that doesn't even exist. Odd Lagna just sorta of makes it for him. They sorta of just get added to his inventory when he's faced with a particular situation. But don't get it twisted, Reinhardt can't suddenly bypass the abilities of every character in fiction. Divine protections can't actually do everything. They act more as buffs or special skills than full on abilities, so Reinhardt can't wish for a divine protection that lets him one shot his enemies or negates a foe's defensive powers. 
By far the most important divine protection is the divine protection of the Sword Saint. With it, Reinhardt instantly becomes the greatest swordsman in the world. Every technique, discipline, and decades worth of training required to wield the sword comes to him not even a second after receiving the protection. He basically reaches the full potential of a swordsman without any effort. Because of this, Reinhardt is basically impossible to defeat in close quarters combat. He can precisely predict and even track the trajectories of every attack coming his way, allowing him to block or parry with ease. He can then hit multiple of your weak points with incredible precision. Even while only using a normal sword, Reinhardt was able to generate an attack so powerful that it decimated an entire building. He can often generate a powerful beam of light that destroys everything in its surroundings. His sword saint skills become even more deadly with his physical stats. Reinhardt can jump so high that he reaches the clouds. He's so fast that he can cross one end of a huge city to the other in less than 30 seconds. And he can launch foes all the way into the stratosphere. His most impressive feat by far is both when he got launched to the moon without taking any notable damage, and then when he jumped from the surface of the moon back to Lagunica in mere seconds. In fact, it's stated that even if he didn't land on the moon, he'd still find his way back to the planet. With all these divine protections, sword skills, and physical stats, Reinhardt is often considered the strongest character in the ReZero universe. A feat that proves his level of strength was his ability to one-shot Puck, a great spirit who on several occasions showed the capacity to destroy the entire world. However, not only was Reinhardt unaffected by the freezing temperatures, but then proceeded to one-shot Puck instantly. Not only that, the attack instantly dispelled Puck's short-lived Ice Age, which was described as destroying the entire world and remaking it anew. A lot of this is thanks to the Dragon Sword Reed, which is an indestructible weapon capable of blocking Regulus's attacks, cutting space and killing dragons with ease. The sword can also only be pulled out against those it deems worthy, such as Puck, who again can destroy the entire world. Reinhardt is often scaled with and even considered stronger than Zatella, the Witch of Envy capable of controlling time and eating half the world. Not even an evil version of Subaru could defeat Reinhardt with over 10,000 different loops, in which he tried every method to possibly exist, which indirectly means that Reinhardt doesn't have any weaknesses. Obviously, he can still be killed, but he just revive himself instantly. The only way to defeat him is to force him to fight an enemy with an incredibly broken ability, or somehow turn off or strip him of all his divine blessings. Other than that, there's almost nobody who can truly defeat Reinhard Van Estrella. Wonder of You controls the natural law of Calamity, a negative energy force that exists in all things. Calamity behaves like extreme misfortune or a series of negative coincidences that affect anyone unlucky enough to be in the stand's range. In order to activate Calamity, you must have the intention to pursue either the stand, the head doctor, or Toru himself. The act of pursue is incredibly vague, but at the very least, the smallest thoughts about attacking or getting in the way of Toru's plans fit the definition of pursuit. However, looking at the stand's back or the user's face can initiate calamities that kill you instantly. Once the ability activates, calamity will immediately begin attacking the pursuer. These calamities are often manifested as random, unpredictable accidents or injuries that will befall its victim. It can cause things like falling objects or other hazardous events to occur seemingly by chance. The world is tied to an unbreakable chain of logic. Everything that has existed and has yet to exist is tied to this chain. Toru and Wonder of You pretty much control the negative aspects of the world's chain of logic in the form of calamity, and they use it as an attack. Everything under heaven and earth, none of them will be by your side. Every object or concept you can think of, all of them will become weapons that attack you, no matter how big or small. A car, a baseball, the floor, even beds. It literally doesn't matter. Everything on Earth is tied to the flow of logic, which also means that everything on Earth will attack you. Objects oftentimes come out of nowhere and without warning. They are sudden and formless and cannot be predicted. They often move in their own illogical ways that make no scientific sense, almost like they have a mind of their own. When these objects or concepts manage to collide with you, they will cause damage that is hundreds of times more powerful than normal. Raindrops basically become bullets, cigarettes pierce through flesh, and your limbs can be severed just from slightly bumping into objects or falling a mere couple feet to the ground. The danger of the calamity scale with how much one tries to pursue Toru, so the more you try to pursue, the more frequent and deadly the calamities become. 
Objects aren't the only thing calamity can affect. They can target an individual's own body as well, such as the ability to exploit medical conditions they may have. An individual's personality can become heavily aggressive when controlled by calamity, to the point where they'll physically attack you or set in motion a series of events that lead to another calamity. Calamity is also tied to comic retribution, the idea that all bad things you did in your past will eventually come back to get you. This comic retribution comes in the form of calamities that attack those who didn't even have the intention to pursue in the first place. Their own bodies can even initiate calamities to harm them or their own allies. Wonder of You has a calamity shield surrounding itself that instantly deflects any attack coming its way, no matter how fast or powerful the attack is. Because calamities come out of nowhere and exist everywhere, even if you attack Toru in an open field with nothing around, something will always occur to protect him even if it makes no sense. Calamities must have some sort of future sight, because events can be set in motion hours or minutes earlier to either protect him or harm his pursuer. Even Wonder of You is shocked by the lengths his ability goes to protect him. So basically, think of Wonder of You as a living embodiment of the Final Destination movies, where a series of events are triggered to harm a specific person. Another way to think of his ability is Murphy's Law, where any possible thing that could go wrong or anything bad that could happen will happen. The range in which Wonder of You can attack you seems to cover several kilometers or even infinite distance. The stand will instantly appear even with the smallest intention to pursue, no matter where you are and no matter where you're hiding. From what we've seen, even the slightest interest in pursuing the head doctor or Toru or talking about him in a casual conversation will cause the stand to manifest nearby and cause weaker calamities to occur. Since calamity is everywhere, the stand can show up in several places at the same time. Wonder of You is a force of nature that has existed long before Toru was even born. Decades before the start of the story, Wonder of You is hinted to have been responsible for the rock disease that has affected the Higashikata family for decades. Johnny Joe Star's attempts to attack and remove this disease was counted as pursuit, and Johnny was in turn killed by his own bullet. Mind you, this bullet was imbued with the infinite rotation, an energy force which not only manifested a stand made up of infinite energy, but was able to bypass a barrier which sends the target's attacks to another point in the past or the future meaning Calamity surpasses the realms of time, space, and infinity. Let's say you manage to destroy Wonder of You or kill its user. Well, that wouldn't matter, as Wonder of You is basically immortal. Since this stand represents the logic and reason of the world, it can never truly go away and will simply manifest somewhere else at an unspecified time. The only way to defeat Wonder of You is either attack it with something that exists above or bypasses the world's logic, or have equal to greater control over reality such as being omnipotent or having a way to remove logic from the world itself. Arcwade Brunstad is a powerful and ancient vampire, often referred to as a true ancestor. True ancestors being like souped up vampires possess abilities that far surpass those of ordinary vampires. Arcoid possesses enhanced speed and strength. She's in fact so fast that she can dodge lightning at point blank range. Her base form is equivalent to the strength of servants like Kukulin, Saber, Scander, and Heracles. So she can likely destroy entire buildings, the vast stretches of land with ease. She's also durable enough to survive attacks that can destroy several city blocks. This is all done by an Arcoid who's only at 30% power and used an additional 5-10% to hold back her vampiric impulses. Even then, her sheer presence alone could shake and distort time and space. Due to being a true ancestor, Arcoid is able to heal from any and all injuries inflicted upon her. She can be cut into 17 different pieces and she'll still put herself back together, especially at night. Arcoid doesn't even have the concept of death, meaning it's basically impossible to kill her no matter what you do. Only weapons or abilities that destroy concepts, like the mystic eyes of death perception, can ever hope to kill her, but even then, this is only temporary. Other abilities she has as a true ancestor are the mystic eyes of enchantment, which can hypnotize and petrify a normal human in fear, and the ability to create ghouls by drinking a human's blood. She can then easily control these zombified humans. Unlike many vampires, Arcway does not need to drink blood to survive, and her true nature is closer to that of the earth itself rather than a typical vampire. In fact, true ancestors are incarnations of nature spirits, beings born from elements of nature. Certain spirits who are tasked by the planet with protecting its resources from the pillaging hands of humanity and other outside forces are known as transcendent species, which include true ancestors. 
the will of the planet, also known as Gaia, protects Earth with the counterforce. A series of mythical monsters, fairies, and gods. It typically employs true ancestors like Arkwade to watch over humanity. To make sure Arkwade does this job to the best of her abilities, Arkwade will receive backup from the planet as part of its counterforce. Arkwade and other true ancestors can draw the amount of power that's needed to face a foe. So if someone who's two times stronger than Arkwade appears, she can draw power from the Earth and scale to her level, and in some instances, even surpass it. There exists an unlimited amount of reserves of power Arkwade can borrow, and only conceptual weapons and abilities that cut her off from the world, nerf her, or destroy the world's soul could ever hope to nullify these unlimited reserves. By far Arkwade's most powerful ability is her Marble Phantasm. By connecting her will to the world, she can transfigure it into whatever environment she can imagine. She can summon different types of weather phenomena, change the Earth's terrain into whatever shape she wants, manipulate the fundamental elements to even the atomic scale, and create objects out of thin air. As long as that object is a part of nature, Arkwade can control it. She used this very ability to condense the very atmosphere into a vacuum. She then used it to shrink and obliterate Roa into spaghetti sauce, Roa being a weaker yet still immortal human vampire. Arkwade often uses her marble phantasm to summon the Millennium Castle Brunstad, often to whom she returns to after her missions. Arkwade can control every aspect of the castle's interior, and uses its chains to attack opponents. By far the most powerful ability Arkwade possesses from her marble phantasm is the ability to store and remove textures from the world. Textures are pieces of the world's layers of reality, which govern certain laws. There are multiple textures that control different aspects of the Earth's nature. There's for example textures that separate the rules of the gods from the rules of humanity. They technically all exist in the same world, but they all follow their own set of rules and physical laws. So removing or destroying a texture is basically erasing the concepts related to that world from existence. That's what Arkwade almost did with her fight with CL. The textures of the city were slowly being removed by a gravitational sphere Arkwade created, and if left unchecked, the entire city would have been swallowed into the void. It's worth noting that Arkwade's control over nature doesn't extend to living things like humans. She can't turn people into frogs or cats into dogs. In fact, her Marvel Phantasm in general is pretty limited in what it can do. At most, she can summon a small village. However, these limits are essentially erased when she reaches her true form, Archetype Earth. Archetype Earth is basically the incarnation of Earth itself. It can now control every aspect of the planet. She can play ping pong with the continents, or melt all of Earth's ice caps in an instant. She can cause every natural disaster on Earth to spawn at the same time, at the most powerful degree. She can control all of Earth's chemical elements, which allows her to strip the Earth of its atmosphere or eliminate all the planet's oxygen. She could be like Dr. Manhattan and dismantle objects at the atomic level. She could stop the Earth's rotation, obliterating everything. She can open rifts in space and throw you in. Archetype Earth is considered one of the top 3 strongest characters in the entire series. When Shiki Tono entered her body, he saw a sea of infinite concepts, showcasing just how powerful Archetype Earth truly is. Even in her base form, she's been called one of the strongest characters in the Tsukihime universe, scaling her above Zelrich Swineorg, who can transcend and borrow power from an infinite amount of parallel worlds. At this point, the only way to defeat Arkwade is to either cut her connection to the Earth by sending her to a different planet or dimension, cut her connection by heavily weakening her, or have a conceptual weapon that can kill Gaia, the will of the world itself. However, good luck accomplishing either of these feats, unless your name is Shiki Tono, you'll be obliterated before you even blink. So we've now established the ability sets of all three characters. Let's see who would come out on top in an epic battle. I'll be honest, there's almost no scenario in which Reinhard can defeat one of you on both Earth and Lagunica. Since logic and calamity exist in all things, that also means that every law within the Rezero universe falls under its control. Now Reinhardt's divine protections are particularly geared towards countering calamity. His divine protections of first sight, second sight, may guarantee that Reinhard is immune to any direct attack or projectile based calamities, but calamity is an unpredictable and formless phenomenon that can come in any shape or form. His defensive divine protections, for example, wouldn't save him from felt slightly bumping into him, causing one of his limbs to fall off. Just from his fight with Regulus, we know Reinhard struggles with attacks that are illogical, 
which Calamity often utilizes. Reinhardt does not possess any divine protections or weapons that are capable of surpassing or bypassing the logic and reason of all things. And no, he can't just ask for a divine protection that bypasses Calamity. Divine protections aren't built for every situation, especially against a foe who can control the logic and reason of the world. However, due to the divine protection of Phoenix, Reinhardt would be able to revive himself even if Calamity managed to kill him. So this would create a stalemate situation, where Reinhardt can't be killed by Calamity but also be unable to close the gap with Wonder of You, which would constantly get him killed. But an argument can be made that Calamity would take control of Odd Lochna itself and use it to turn off Reinhardt's divine protections, or give him a divine protection that's incredibly disadvantageous. Even if Odd Lochna is a conscious being, Calamity has casually forced others to do its bidding, even without realizing it. But this is assuming our Lagna isn't an entity that exists outside of the world's logic. Well, maybe Reinhardt would have a better chance at beating Arcoid. Unfortunately, Reinhardt may be even more screwed in his situation. First of all, Arcoid will always be automatically stronger than Reinhardt due to the counterforce giving her the right amount of power to counter a foe. We know Reinhardt has the power to destroy the world with ease, but why would that matter when Arcoid can just speed blitz him and obliterate him before he even raises his sword? Arcoid at the peak of her powers can destroy the entire planet, which not only encompasses the entire natural world, but other 6D to 8D dimensions like Avalon. Even if Reinhardt somehow managed to land a hit on Arcoid, the fact that she doesn't have the concept of death means she can't be killed, and while Reinhardt's ancestors had the ability to cut and destroy concepts, Reinhardt does not, so he'd simply be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of power. Worse yet, Arcoid with her Marble Phantasm and her archetype Earth form would simply bully Reinhardt. The fact that she can remove concepts and control every aspect of nature would give her access to Adlagna and his treasury of divine protections. If she wanted to, she could strip him of all his protections and give him the beatdown of a lifetime. Things would be just as one-sided if she fought Toru. Because of her ability to remove concepts and control every aspect of the Earth, that gives her access to logic and reason of all things, at least on Earth. Meaning Toru's imprecise control of Calamity would be nullified and overwritten when face to face with Dark Wade. Toru's only choice would be to throw a Calamity that's not tied to Earth, like an asteroid, but I doubt there's anything big or powerful enough to kill her. So we know Arcoid will be the victor on Earth, but what if we move things to the ReZero world? Well, Reinhardt would immediately get the home advantage. Judging from the fact that stars from our world cannot be observed in the ReZero world, that either means that the ReZero world exists outside of the observable universe, or light from its stars have reached Lagunica, or the world of ReZero exists in a completely different dimension. Either way, Arcoid will be cut off from her vast array of abilities. Since she's an incarnation of nature spirits and an extension of Gaia's will, that means Arcoid is fully reliant on the Earth's power in order to utilize the full extent of her abilities. While on Lagunica, Reinhardt would far surpass her in speed, strength, and reflexes. Every one of Arcoid's attacks would either be dodged or shrugged off, and a single swipe from his cheap dragon sword would blast her to pieces. It's not as if Arcoid is entirely powerless, but she's heavily nerfed outside of the realms of Earth. For example, if Reinhardt cut her into pieces using the Divine Blessing of Death God, Arcoid would be unable to heal, and the usual advantages of being a true ancestor wouldn't be at their max potential. The Divine Blessing of Death God basically makes it so you cannot heal from your injuries, no matter what you do. Her mystic eyes of enchantment and ability to transform Reinhardt into a mindless dead apostle wouldn't work due to his divine blessings granting him complete immunity from curses, diseases, and debuffs. However, everything I've said only applies to the nerfed version of Arcoid. It's an entirely different story with Archetype Earth. Archetype Earth is technically classified as an ultimate one, the living manifestation of planets who have the capacity to destroy all of humanity in mere seconds, even when they are not underneath their planet. So in theory, if Archetype Earth just strolled up to Lokunika, she would still have full capacity to wipe out everything in the ReZero world, faster than Shigitono gets added to FGO. However, we know Reinhardt can still one-shot beings who have the power to destroy the world, so how exactly is this any different? Well, Ultimate Ones don't possess the concept of death or even the concept of damage, so Reinhardt would be unable to even scratch her. The only way to kill an Ultimate One is to use a conceptual weapon that forcefully imposes the concept of death onto immortal beings, such as Gun God's Black Barrel. So in a situation where Reinhardt is forced to fight Archetype Earth on Lagunica, it would be a stalemate situation where neither side can really kill each other. Odd Lagna would just keep reviving Reinhardt forever, 
and Reinhardt would be unable to bypass Arqui's immortality. Things would play out similarly if she fought one of you. Unlike on Earth, Archetype Earth would be unable to stop the constant onslaught of Calamity. However, due to not having the concept of death, she would be unable to get killed or even incapacitated by Calamity unless Calamity utilizes the White Whale to erase her from existence, which is indeed possible since its existence erasure can be considered a conceptual attack. So to recap, in a scenario where all three fighters on Earth, with the rules and power systems of each series existing at the same time, Wonder of You would defeat Reinhardt with medium to high difficulty, Arcoid would defeat Reinhardt with light difficulty, and Arcoid would demolish Toru more times than you roll on Ramainyu in FGO. If we switch to Logunica, Wonder of You would still defeat Reinhard with medium difficulty. Reinhard would dog walk base form Arcoid with medium difficulty. Wonder of You on some occasions will make Arcoid look like the blood in my basement, which I have no idea where it came from. So all in all, taking everything into consideration, when unstoppable forces collide, Arcoid Brunstad wins 75% of the time. Her level of power is just far too high for either of them to deal with. Especially on Earth, even in a completely separate location, her ultimate one status makes her virtually unkillable, and very few objects or people in JoJo or ReZero would ever hope to stand up to her.